Hi, my name is Tom Woods with R2 Sports Technology, and in this video, we're going to take a minute and look at how you use a dashboard to scout an opposing team's defense. So in this case, we're going to look through the lens of an offensive coordinator uh, or offensive staff that's taken time to break down their next opponent's defense and uh, take a look at how we can use that dashboard to see some tendencies and really uh, kind of the, the most optimal way to, to attack an opposing defense, if you will using one of these dashboards. Uh, again, just as a frame of reference here, um, I know we have a pretty good sense already of what these dashboards do, but I always kind of lead with a, an initial impression when I look at a dashboard. Now in this case, this is film breakdown data on an opposing team's defense. And so it's always interesting when you, when, well, uh, again, I've always been careful to say this as I interact with coaches, that I am not a football coach. I am a, a data guy. Um, who cut my teeth in the aerospace and defense world. So I'm not a football coach, and I don't want to presume too much um, or pretend to be one. So I always look through the lens of, of data and what the information tells me. So I'm going to talk from that perspective as I walk you through this. But uh, from my interactions with coaches and from working uh, with dashboards like these where we're scouting an opposing team's defense, it's a bit more challenging sometimes for um, offensive guys as they scout – the defense because it's very uh, you have to put everything in context um, defenses tend to react to what offenses show them so if you're going to understand what you're likely to see from a defense you can only understand it as you look through um, uh, looks and formations and things that an offense presented to them to see how they reacted to it when you scout an opposing team's offense they tend to um, be less reactive and more that they do what they're going to do, so we can we can see it a little bit more obviously. But when we look at an opposing team's defense, that becomes a little bit more of a challenge. So take that as a uh, just as an observation as you break down film. If you break down film on your opposing team's defense, it's important that you include in your breakdown some offensive pieces of information too, so that you can set the context right to really understand what that defense may or may not be doing. Um, but enough preaching on the way you could break down a defense. I want to show you how we would use one of these dashboards. Now, again, it, uh, keep in mind that when we look at a dashboard, it's all about size and color when we try and interpret what we're seeing. And I usually start when I pop any dashboard open just by taking in an initial impression of what I see. And again, this team that we're looking at here, it's, this is something you always got to keep straight in your mind as you look at an opposing defense, is that color is always telling you offensive performance. So if so as I look at this, the general color that I see in this dashboard is overall, this, it's about a green type of color. And again, if you go to the team box and just look at that, it kind of summarizes everything. As a team, this is almost a 50% efficient, um, uh, I should say this, offenses are about 50% efficient against this defense. So when you look at a dashboard where you're scouting an opponent's defense, Green means they're a, a relatively poor defense. They're not a very strong defense because a strong defense is going to be one where offenses struggle against it. So the color that you would see if this was a very, very good defense would be more orange and red and yellow. The fact that there's a fair amount of green and blue is telling me that this is not, uh, this is a defense that has, that certainly can be had in certain areas. Okay. So always keep that perspective in mind on what the color is telling you. So to take a to kind of look at some different ways that you might approach this, um, here's a couple of ways that I've seen most offensive staffs um, attack defenses and, and use their dashboards to do that. Keeping in mind, color tells you offensive performance. So in this case, where a defense is weak or soft, we're looking for green and blue colors. That'll be areas where offenses has take, have taken advantage of them. Where a defense is particularly strong, we're going to see orange and red. So as an offensive coordinator, many, one approach is to look for soft spots in this defense. If you can identify soft spots, then you can identify plays and set up situations where you can trust that they're going to be in that weak spot and you can find your best play to abuse them in there. Let's take, one, let's take an example here just to kind of show you how that might be done. Now, if I look at them overall here, let's just let's take it a couple, look at a couple things you can take a look at here. I'm going to draw your attention down here to the play type uh, box here. Now, 
what we're seeing is, is opposing opposing offenses against this defense were about 50-50 run pass on them. But the thing I want to draw your attention to is the blue color here in the run section. And what that tells us is that opposing offense were very effective running the ball against this defense. Less so passing. We can see that from the color here where it's more orange. About 40% efficient when they threw against this defense. But when they ran, 60% efficient. This defense can be run on big time. Okay, So that's, that's some quick observations that you, that you can make as you interpret what we see here. Now let's take a look uh, at how we might expose some different things in this in this defense. Now this offensive staff, when they broke things down, did a good job because they included some offensive things to help us understand the context of what we're looking at. They've got formations and basically offensive plays or schemes that were used against this defense. And then they're looking at the things you might expect to see. Fronts, coverages, blitzes, stunts, that kind of thing. Now. If we want to take a look at their most common fronts that that you can expect to see out of this defense, over fronts, this over eight front and under front, if we want to look at, at what to expect or when we can expect to see these types of things, we simply click on one of these. Now let's, let's look at situations where this defense shows an under front. So to do that, I simply click on this, and again, as you can understand from the dashboard, it's going to update everything around that spot. So what we're looking at now is every play that was run against this team when this team was showing an under front associated with it. Now, what we talk about with each click, the, the way to interpret what you see is to look through the different pieces of information and interpret size and color to help you understand um, the types of things or the, um, excuse me, the uh, information that can help you kind of understand what was done against this defense in that situation. So. I might click on the under front and I begin to look through this and say, okay, what can I expect to see if they show me an under front? A couple of things we can observe. Um, if I look at the down, the down distance situation over here, um, under fronts you're going to see most likely on first or second down. Um, between first and second down, that was about 80% of the time you saw an under front. So if you're looking for an under front, you're probably not going to see one on third down. You're probably going to see it on either first or second down. If I look at my offensive schemes here, I can see types of plays and types of offensive approaches that were effective against an under front. And there were many because they struggled out of this front combination that they showed. Most things worked well, but we can, if we look down here at the play type again, running against an under front was highly effective for offenses that saw this. So take this without trying to um, dictate the way you would coach. Again, I, I really don't have much of an opinion on it. but. But if I, uh, if I came to the line of scrimmage and saw them in an under front, um, running the ball might be a better option than passing the ball. Uh, maybe there's an audible or something like that that the quarterback can call to switch a play. But we can begin to look and see where, where do teams have success against this kind of front. We can also see when they're in an under front that you're most likely to see these types of coverages as well. So in this case, uh, man, again, don't have an opinion on exactly what these mean because I'm not the football guy. But an 11 coverage and a cover 4 are the most common types of coverages you're going to see if they show you an under front. So I can begin to get an understanding of what I'm likely to see and what plays are likely to have success against a given front that this defense may show me. Now, and then I can game plan around that and begin to understand that, hey, I'm probably going to see an under, if I'm going to see an under front, it's going to be on first or second down. And I'm going to have an audible ready that says, hey, when I see under, then the play we want to run is going to be a certain run play. Or maybe it's a quick pass or one of these things that we can take advantage of what, we, of what coverage they may be in. That's a quick example of what you might do with the front. Now, if we back out of this a little bit, I'm just going to reset this now. And let's take a look at, at a one of the front combinations or one of the fronts they show where they tend to be more successful. So if we look at the second most common front that they show is this over eight front. Now, just by clicking on this, this is one where offenses struggled more against an over eight front. Now, again, clicking on that shows me the information I can see. It shows me when they show over eight, they tend to be in 11 coverage and they tend to be really good defensively out of that coverage that they show in that case. Now, against an over eight front, running the ball is far more effective than passing the ball. Okay, 
And if I'm going to run the ball, as an example, if I click on run in this case, so running against an over 8 front, I can see the types of schemes and formations that had success against that. So with just a quick click, I can say, hey, this is a good, they're tough out of an over 8 front. But if you see it, the plays where you can have success are zone read plays and power plays. So even though overall over 8 has been a really good for, a front for them, I can very quickly see the types of plays that I should be calling if I see that look. And if I, what I don't want to run into if I'm an offensive coordinator going against this team is I roll out with an over 8 front and my play call is one of these boss calls or a zone plus call or a stretch play or a trap and I'm calling one of these plays that feeds right into their strength. The dashboard lets me see very quickly, hey, even though there are situations where this team is strong, I, it's almost like I've got a map through the minefield that says, hey, there's potential trouble here out of this front, but I can avoid it by calling these types of plays, and I can avoid stepping on the mines that might happen if I called these. So it's a way to very quickly decompose how to attack this team. Just as another quick example of this, let's say I, if I'm good, over eight front against a very good one, and from a passing perspective, they're very good against the pass out of this over eight front. If I look at my pass situation, my pass options, I'm going to click on that. I can quickly see the types of things that will or won't work. So while they're very good against the pass in an over eight front, there are types of passes where I can have success. And if I see that, what I want to avoid if I'm passing, I want to avoid drop back passes. I want to avoid play action because against an over eight, they have been very good against those types of plays. But I can still have success. I can have success with quick passes, bootlegs, bubble screens, wide receiver screens. So I need to see that. I can see that very quickly. And I can get that into my play call list or my audible list and understand that, hey, if, I, if my guys hit the line, they see that front uh, and we have a play action pass called they, need, they can know quickly, we've got to get out of that and into something else. So it, again, the dashboard is just there, it, as we've said in other videos, and I probably did, I should have mentioned this at the beginning of this, the dashboard again should not mandate the way you think. It, it, the, you don't have to adjust your way of thinking to make a dashboard work for you. However you approach the process of understanding and decomposing and breaking down an opponent, dashboards should support that. It's just here as a tool to help you quickly get the information and follow the right train of thought to get where you want to go. So um, again, this provides kind of a quick example of how you can look for those soft spots in defenses. And even where you see a defensive strength, you can still identify the path to navigate through that to avoid trouble and know the right types of play calls and, and situations where you're going to find them in, in, uh, in coverages and fronts that you can take advantage of.